Well, hello everyone, and welcome back here to the elevator. In the last episode, we had some choices, we had some decisions, we had some conversation. It looks like Eleanor and uh, our detective David are getting closer and closer, and it gets like it gets like uh, David's companion, David's partner, I should say, rather than companion. Jonathan is getting snarkier and snarkier. I totally think I gave him the right voice, you know. So, we left up our, our hero and our heroine here, just talking in the entranceway to their office building, standing there waiting for the rain to subside. And they learned some things about each other. Let's see how this moves on, shall we? I guess you're right, Detective. Weird. I'm feeling a sense of deja vu. Was it from that? Well, Anna and I, Eleanor and I have talked over the last few months. No doubt she said that to me before. You know, Detective Carmichael, I think you've got to be the most interesting fellow I've ever met in my life. I wish my children could get to know you and learn from you. Macmillan's talking to me again through the double-sided mirror. I don't know how he does it, but he always knows when I'm in there. With a sigh, I switch on the intercom. You want your kids to learn from the man who brought you down? I thought you were supposed to be a genius. Think about it. They could learn more about me from studying you. You know me better than anyone, don't you? That's how you could catch me. You had to, um... Get inside my head. Is that the jargon? He sounds amused, even though what he's saying should be disturbing. And how do you like it? How do I like what? The view from inside my head. Do you know what? I've got those voices the wrong way round, haven't I? Let's do that again. And how do you like it? How do I like what? The view from inside my head. His tone suggests that he's offended I didn't get his meaning immediately. It was a dark place. I'd like it very much if I never had to go back there. I suspect, suspect you never will. Not after this. Hmm. You're what, 26 this year? Don't give me that look, David. If you know so much about me, don't you think I'd read up on a bit on you? I didn't think you had time for stuff like that. Why not? I have plenty of time on my hands. Still do, in fact. I contemplate Ashura and the Kingdom of Heaven constantly. It would be better if you spent time thinking about all the innocents you killed. Nonsense. Thinking about the dead isn't very productive at all. I only humor you a bit during these interrogations because they won't let me talk to you otherwise. He laughs heartedly, as if he's made a brilliant joke. If it wasn't for you, I'd have to talk to those stuffy prosecutors all day. Very, very dull business, that. And what about my age? Oh, so you are curious. When I don't respond right away, he looks just a little bit disappointed, but presses on nonetheless. I was just thinking that 26 is a nice age to be. I suspect you have many years left ahead of you. Before what? Oh, before you go to hell. It's a shame, really. It would have been great fun having you in heaven, but I'm afraid you locking me in here isn't getting you many points with God. When you get there, Macmillan, tell your God that I think he's pretty fucked up. Minus three points for vulgarity, but plus one point for starting to acknowledge his existence. Maybe you'll make up for your negative points before you die. That would be delightful. A buzzer sounds from behind me. His family's here to visit him. They're allowed to do so exactly once a month for about half an hour. I can't help but hope that what he tells them is more pleasant than what he's always telling me. I wake from a dream, from a memory, covered in a cold sweat. I grope around in the darkness looking for something, anything, but I grasp nothing but air. I've had enough of this. I don't give a shit if Ashura is the real god. I don't want to think about it anymore. I don't want to remember anymore. 
I have to work in a few hours. Better get back to sleep. You seem troubled today, detective. The rain didn't make you catch a cold, did it? No, nothing like that. I had some trouble sleeping. I see. That's a shame. You should leave work early today. Then, if you're still feeling tired, I hope work isn't too busy today. Yeah, you know what? I think I will do that. We don't have any big cases to work on anyway, so it wouldn't hurt anything. Sorry to worry you all the time. You shouldn't bother so much with an old man like me, Eleanor. Oh, I don't think of you as an old man, Detective. While I stopped to think how, how to respond to that, I noticed it we gone well past the 54th floor already. It'll be my stop soon enough. Wait, we passed your floor. What? Oh, no. I know I pushed the button for my floor. I must not have used enough floors. Sorry you had to wait a while longer. It's all right. I don't mind spending a bit more time with you, Detective. I'm serious. You ought to spend more time with fellows around your own age. I remember that look on her face when Eleanor told me she had no one to talk to. She doesn't deserve that. Eleanor deserves someone who will make her feel better than when it rains and her father's crying. She doesn't need someone like me who can't even move on from his past. I step out of the elevator, not intending to say anything else. Maybe I was a little harsh? Minus 100 points, Detective Carmichael. What? I whirl around just as the elevator doors start to close. What was that all about? Did she say points? Dave? Oh, John. Was that the elevator girl? Hmm, yes, that's Eleanor, all right. Eleanor? Why does that name sound familiar? I've never told you her name before. No, it must never have come up, I suppose. Eleanor. Hmm, Eleanor. You keep tabs on the other companies in the building, don't you? Her name probably came up once or twice. Huh? Which company does she work at? Pluma? It's a travel agency, if I remember right. She's a secretary. You always remember, right? Pluma, huh? I don't remember a travel agency being in this building, but I could be wrong about that. It's been a while since I checked. Which floor is she on? The 54th floor. She missed her floor by accident today. She normally gets off before I do. John's eyebrows furrow in confusion. 54th? There's no way. What? Why not? Nobody can work on the 50s in this building. The floors have been sealed off for ages because of some incident before. A fire or something. They never got round to fixing it all. What? How can this be possible? Well, you've seen her get off on the 54th floor every day, right? Oh, right. I didn't even think of that. Leave it to an old man to jump to conclusions. Yeah, it looked like a normal office hallway to me. I think I'd have noticed if the floor had been co was condemned. They might have fixed it up recently then. Like I said, it's been a while since I checked. Dave? Huh? Oh yeah, I'm sure you're right. Still, I can't get all of this stuff off my mind for the rest of the day. Something's nagging at me. Something big. Minus 100 points, Detective Carmichael. I've only ever known one other person to say something like that to me. Come to think of it, her eyes were the same color as his. In a horrified daze, I start going through my files, putting out all my information on the self short killer. I haven't looked at these files in years, but with my vivid memories, I thought that there was no need to look to. I had John organize the files for me and then put them away. I even had have to dust off uh, dust them off a bit before I sit down. Avery McMillan, the South Shore Killer, murdered almost 50 people that we know of because he wanted them to go to heaven. He was a fanatic about religion nobody else believed in. And I caught him. 
I worked with hired thugs and used dirty government money to shed up a perimeter and finally track him down. And yet, he knew I was on his trail. Everyone always wondered why he insisted on killing people at the beach, even when he knew we were on to his pattern. But even after we knew, he eluded us. He would take advantage of camera blind spots or use other people as shields. It was as if he was taunting us, declaring silently that even with our knowledge, we couldn't catch him. In the end, though, we still did. I led the team that put him behind bars and delivered the death penalty to him. I watched, expressionless, as they injected him with a poison that would kill him almost immediately. In his last moments, I'm sure he was thinking of his god. Avery Macmillan Known as a loving, loving father and a good husband, his neighbours liked him, and nobody seemed to think badly of him at all. He had three children who adored him, two twin boys and a girl. My heart almost stops when I see the daughter's name, and yet part of me isn't surprised at at all. The puzzle pieces fit perfectly, but it's too late. Eleanor. The daughter's name is Eleanor Macmillan. Frantically, I go through the files more. I knew that! I watched countless times as his family visited him. How could I forget something like that? How could I forget something as important as that? Memories may begin to float to the surface. Memories I'd forgotten, that I'd been forced to forget. I watch a sick feeling in my gut as Avery Macmillan tells his daughter that he will always be with her. After the trial, his family is put under protection to protect them, prevent them from being massacred, literally or figuratively, by the rest of the world. I watch the Macmillan family file quietly into the back of a van. They're driven away on a rainy day, the day Avery Macmillan is executed. The memory of them is wiped after that. I know they exist, I remember his family, and yet I don't. I don't remember six-year-old Eleanor's deep green, unfeeling eyes. I don't remember her father telling her that never to forgive or forget, never to forgive or forget me. Just as she wished, she got to know me, maybe even learned from me. The electricity in the office goes out. And yet, despite the odds, I'm in peace as Macmillan's God tries to take me. Right. Well. Hi. Well, there we go. That was the true ending. And I understand there is another ending. Which, you know what? I think I'll do next episode. So what do you think? Please let me know. That was fun. I enjoyed reading that. So guys, until the next time, I have been Simon Parsons. This has been The Elevator. Thank you and good night. <laughs>